So welcome to Humanity Arise. Yeah, I don't know if any of you were, <laughs> thank you. Were you at the opening ceremony when Barbara introduced this gesture? Humanity Arise gesture. So whenever she says Humanity Arise, you can just feel free to do that. Okay. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for being you and bringing all your unique gifts to the world. We're so happy that you're here with us. We have four amazing young people who live here at Sunrise Ranch who have a song for you. People, are you ready to arise? Yeah. It was, uh, it's an original song written by Adrian Navarro, and he'll be performing it with his sister, Ana Lara, and also sisters, Kaya and Jazzy Sakura will join him. Thank you. Hey, louder. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. A lot louder. Yeah. This is that consciousness of Robin from the vessel. In spite of everything, we still preserve, we something special. If we to build a temple, then account for every pebble. Arise all my people on an energetic level. Huh, the beat got more kick. Stronger than your express. So the greediest the needs needs to season that said, bruh. This is none other than the curious rebel. Bound to bend the rule while you sitting on a pedal, take a stand. If you're aware of the demand, it's not the quantity, the quandary that forces on one hand. So what's your plan? I beg your pardon, what's your plan? I've been coming up with it since you've been fighting with the man. Whoa. Whoa. Even greater than before. Caught up in the frequencies, I'm trusting them a little more. And up on higher planes like I've never been before. Like a spirit in the sky, transcending and I'm soaring high. Rising above, living the moment. We are the poets, the word of the flow is ever more focused. Shows it important, taking it back, the moment before it. And we zone and have you noticed? Did you notice? Please forgive me if I'm floating. I've saying the highest motion. People, are you ready to arise? I can see the burning flame of beauty in your eyes. It's the time, the moment for mankind. Awakening and spirit yes. growing from inside. People, are you ready to arise? Rise. I can see the world is changing from a brighter paradigm, blooming into paradise. This is the time. Get together, all my people revolutionized. I could see a city filled with light. In fact, I visualized. I could hear my people's cries. It made me want to join the play. I no longer want to be the system hurting us inside. Now take a dictation. Exceed my expectation, calling to the nations, lighting up for people's generations. The innovations have no limitations, sending out vibrations. And I'm making changes. I no longer hide beneath the shadows of a folk mass. Even you awakening my people from a great mass. Really is amazing, truly moving finally at last. I'm a past emotion, stir the potion like a broadcast. This is that moment of time. The busiest of seasons, a cycle at its end. Give me reason to release it. Take a journey with me, brother. You feel like so inclined, sing your harmony, my sister. Feeling good inside the beat. Beat to regular beat like a runaway train. Never had no reason not to say that. I took a second just to stop so I could live. Mass present what I ever from this moment to my very last. People, are you ready to arise? I can see the burning flame, the beauty in your eyes. This is time, the moment for mankind. Awakening in spirit, growing from inside. People, are you ready to arise? I can feel the world is changing from a part of paradise. Blooming in the paradise. This is a time, huh. yeah, yeah. Right, the feeling is good. All the power of the mind should. I'm not stopping the move with the air that is crazy. How fast everybody we could. Started with the party, jump up on the fly like Marty. Futuristic friends in my head, chatted by me. Honest, honestly, like this is the greatest thing. Nothing, nothing has beat. The crowd is hopping to the prize beat. And look at us, we moving closer to our destiny. You love to sing and let me hear it. Let your voices ring. Judge my mind, I can reach it. Everybody, everybody, everybody had the power. If I search the soul for the answers I look inside a question to the heart But I won't stop there, put my drive to a line If you call me, I'll be there Set the steady age apart oh, oh, oh. Set the steady age apart oh, oh, oh. Set the steady age apart no. Everybody stand up! Woo! Get it, Anilada? Do your thing. Woo! All right. Rise.
Thank you. All right, do it with me. Humanity, all right. Aren't they great? Who knew? Really, really good. Um, okay, so next we're going to have a storytelling. A little bit of a different energy than what we've been doing here. <laughs> but um, it's going to be a magical, cosmic, mythical, epic story. So all cultures, in all cultures, there's a key defining element, which is the stories that they tell, stories that they pass down, the stories that they share with each other. And those stories define uh, where a culture is going, what a culture values, what matters most to them, and what they are co-creating together. So Barbara Marks Hubbard has been telling the story of evolution, not in the past, but continuing on through now to evolve into greater and greater consciousness. Barbara's been telling this story her entire lifetime. And the story that she's going to tell tonight is a story that we can join in together to create our future, all that is possible in the future for our Earth, we can create together. And that's the story that she tells, that she's going to tell you tonight. Yeah, we need a new story, right? It's time. It's about time. So Barbara is an author, speaker, teacher, and the president of the Foundation for Conscious Evolution. And she's known throughout the world as the mother of conscious evolution. She's going to be accompanied in her storytelling by Bridget Law, who is a musician and singer. I heard her sing this afternoon again. I'd forgotten what a beautiful voice she has. Um, but tonight she's going to play the violin. She plays the violin like no one else. And she will accompany the story with the violin. Um, you may know Bridget from Elephant Revival. And yeah. And Bridget also performs with um, her fiance, Tierra Lee, who's the co producer of the Arise Music Festival. They played this afternoon, actually, at uh, Eagle Stage. So um, let's welcome Bridget Law and Barbara Marks Hubbard for this story. Everybody, well, just let's take a moment to realize where we are in the great, great story of creation. We've never known it before. We've only recently learned that every single one of us alive now, that the cells and the organs and the brain and the eyes and the ears and the thoughts that are in us were created in the billions of years that came before us. And the exciting thing now is every one of us, whether we know it or not, is coded with the emerging story. And that the newness in every one of us is that story evolving. And what we're really here to do when we tell the story of the past is break through to the new species that's awakening in us today, right here in you. That's our goal. So we're telling you an awesome story, and I am so proud and delighted to have this. It's more than accompaniment. When Bridget and I started to play with this, I would say something, and then she would play and expand on it. And then I would come back and say more and based on what she did. So we're very much partners in the telling of the universal story. And we see that one day there will be huge concerts. <laughs> telling this whole story. So we're at the very beginning. You're with us. It's in all of us. And let us enjoy it together. So be it. We're going to start out with our most favorite expression, humanity arise. Say it. 
say it out loud and see how you feel when your arms stretch. Humanity. Uh, that's what's going to happen today. So if, in order for you to get started with all of this, I want to tell you a love story. A cosmic love story. An evolutionary love story. And we're all starring in it. Everyone is a star of this play. And we're going to open our evolutionary eyes together to see the part in the story that we're called to now. So to get started, just imagine the universe. Billions and billions of galaxies. Multitudes of smaller galaxies, each with trillions of stars. And then we focus just on a very, very local event. Our galaxy and in it, our Earth, so tiny that the astronauts could hide it behind their thumbs. So we when we're telling our story, we have to place ourselves in this magnificent Earth in a universe of untold dimensions and possibly filled with forms of life so far beyond what we have ever known. But what we do know is we're just about opening our collective eyes to find out. That's exactly where we are. So in order to catch a glimpse of our story, it's very interesting to notice the story of creation that brought us here. So let's start at the beginning in the mind of God, in the mind of source, in the infinite intelligence, in consciousness. In the mystery beyond all mysteries, what happened to begin the story, we can see it as a spiral. The formation of the universe, these billions, trillions of galaxies. The formation of our Earth. The formation of life on that earth, next turn in the spiral. The formation of multicellular life, plants, animals, the biosphere. The formation of human life, Australopithecus africanus, Afri uh, the Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo neanderthal, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, sapiens. And do you think that the whole thing ends here with us? Do you imagine we're the final version? And the universe said, now we've really got it. There they are. This is it. <laughs> it's really interesting when you think of it that way. So as the first species to ever know that we're part of this vast story of creation, the first species to ever know we could render ourselves extinct or we could evolve ourselves, the first species to ever know we're waking up to evolution and that we are conscious of evolution. So just take a moment to see the awesome, amazing reality of this generation. We might not have noticed how important we are. We might not have realized that it's possible that those billions and billions of years are in the balance as to the way our generation chooses to act, to the way our generation chooses to create. And this means the purpose of this story is to see what's inside of you that could possibly rise to the occasion of being decisive in the story of evolution. <laughs>
itself. Okay? All right. All right. Now, I, you, they say, and nobody has any idea how this came. If you ask a scientist how this happened, he'll say, it came from no thing at all, which is to say everything that is in the Big Bang. The first two to three seconds of that Big Bang was so perfectly designed in energy and matter and motion that if it had been a little faster or a little slower, nothing could have happened. In other words, there is a perfection at the very awesome start of creation and nobody understands how it happened. It is, it is incomprehensible to the scientists and the mythical people and the spiritual people. But I think one thing we can definitely recognize, it was awesomely intelligent. Awesome. And the idea that it was totally accidental, as I said to some physicists who told me it was accidental, I said, you have a lot of faith in accident. <laughs> really? And if you can imagine the absolute perfect, the way it was designed accidentally. And you know what they do to try to prove it's an accident? They try to say, well, there were so many billions of universes that by accident, one made it. Well, that's, that's their effort right there. So let's just take a very fast sweep we went for universe Earth. Let's look at Earth. What was Earth? It was a rock. Now, it's hard to imagine about 3.5 billion years ago, this was a rock of Earth, a magnificent achievement, but completely without life. What happened? <laughs> I'm glad somebody laughed. Yeah. You almost have to have a nervous laugh because whatever happened then is happening now. That's the, the big thing. What happened was DNA. <laughs> the first symphony to DNA that we've had so far. <laughs> Clever, clever, clever little DNA. So brilliant, our engineers don't know how to form it. And what did DNA do appearing on this rock? Genetic engineering. <laughs> and as Brian Swim said, no hands, no manual. So just absorbing the intelligence that seems to have direction and purpose without any instructions to be seen. So the DNA, the genetic engineering, all the various forms of life, eventually the, the geosphere, the biosphere, the early creatures, to see that incredible procession of that arose from animal to human and what you see is obvious that through this enormous story of impulse of creation that impulse does not stop with it's arriving right now and giving birth to something new if just as an image for this if you were a bulb and you were being planted in the winter in New England, down in the dark soil of Earth. And for all that winter, you stayed under the soil until the sun came out and you began to send that bulb up there, green shoots, and there were little green shoots show, showing through the snow when suddenly daffodils everywhere daffodils completely invisible from the bulb we learn to expect the unexpected and anticipate the new nobody could have 
expected this. Now, if that happened, can you imagine what might be happening now? So you have to have a huge imagination to even begin to imagine the radically new that might be coming. But once you realize that it couldn't stop here, then you open your imagination. And now here is a revelation that came from Teilhard de Chardin. The revelation is that there is a plot to the story. There is a storyline and it appears that the universe is going somewhere. And I'll tell you what the main plot in the storyline of universal evolution are. It's three things all the way through from single cell to us. Number one, expanded consciousness. Single cell to multi cell to animal to human. The universe is tending toward greater consciousness. How? Through more complex order. By bringing particles together. By what? By attraction. And it has been said that the universe is a love story. Particle to particle, all the way on up by allurement, by attraction, by a form of love that consciousness became so attractive that these cells were joining together more and more complexity. And as they did, they had greater freedom to choose, to fail, to express, to create, to destroy. And let's just look at those three elements first and place them in our own heart. Are we interested in expanded consciousness? Okay. Guess what the force is with you then? <laughs> Are we interested in more love, more creativity, and more connectivity? Well, then the universe is with you. <laughs> and how about freedom? <laughs> well, this is a very good revelation of the purpose of evolution. It, and it, wait till you see what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, now this is another thing to notice. Very serious. There were five mass extinctions before we got here. Billions and billions of species have been extincted. Now, let's even realize that out of every one of these extinctions, there has arisen more consciousness, more freedom, and more complex order. So it appears that crises precede transformation and problems of extinction are evolutionary drivers that up till now, no matter how many billions and billions of species are extinct, more and more consciousness, freedom, and order has arisen out of all those jumps. So without analyzing it overly except evolution is a tremendous challenge as to how it works. It's good, but it's not nice. You cannot protect all those species. They're gone. But here is what we can do. Where do we find ourselves? We are right now at the threshold of the sixth mass extinction. Yes? The five that came before us, we have developed a system where we are outgrowing the womb of earth we're overpopulating polluting destroying we didn't know when i graduated from college in 1951 they said barbara have as many babies as possible and get out there and win it was a completely different culture that was just 1951 my life is an arc of the transformation of history from 1929 to 2017 
So the the sixth mass extinction is right where we are now, and we're learning something that this has been my real exploration in life. We're learning conscious evolution. We're learning evolution by choice, not chance. We're affecting our own evolution by everything we do. The babies we have, the food we eat, the cars we drive, the wars we fight, the thoughts we have. So, so this species that we are, based on all that has come before us and the struggle of all life forms before us, are the first life form ever to have a choice. A conscious evolution or devolution and extinction. Now, I interpret this that the source of creation, the process of evolution, the way God works, is that the purpose of evolution is to create co creators. The reason for the freedom, the reason for the possibility of self destruction is choice. Now, if I were the creator of the universe, I would want co creators, not robots. So we actually are facing a situation given to us by the divine process of creation with its enormous intelligence, with the ability to destroy or create and the choice. So the question is, how are we going to make this choice? It feels to me it has to come from inside us. We do not have a dictator God. We do not have a controlling co creator that is made all of us follow what that creator is telling us. But what the creator has offered us is the internal impulse of creativity. Yes? The impulse desire for more consciousness, for more freedom, for more complex order. In other words, we've been patterned with something that is in every one of us that in my understanding and this is where we're going to join together that it is actually our generation and even here at arise music and at the dome right now would be among the people on this planet most capable of making the choices to arise and it, I mean, isn't that amazing? But would there be a better group? <laughs> I mean, are they sitting somewhere else that you, <laughs> that you would like to ask them? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's us. It's pretty well us for sure. And then everybody else who's so choosing. So then I could ask, um, we're going to ask everybody why you think you're here. Well, I'll ask, I'll ask myself, Barbara, why are you here? What am I doing? I mean, an 88 year old woman who has been told, people say sometimes, Barbara, do you feel you're getting younger? And I say, no, I think I'm getting newer. <laughs> I think I'm getting newer every day. Why? Because the world is getting newer. And everybody who is saying yes to their own part in what they want to create in a world that is evolving towards radical newness that we've never seen before and we're not going into the sixth mass extinction then folks what are we going toward we have to have visions of where we're going or we cannot move there because it's choice you see so here is my offering i believe that we are becoming a new species. And I'm calling the new species Homo Universalis. <laughs> and I must say, last night, when I, when I did this, the one thing everyone cheered about was Homo Universalis. And how come? What was it about that phrase? Anybody want to just shout out something? Why did you like it? Homo Universalis. What did you think when I said that? It what? 
It touches each of us. What else? Hope. Yes. We belong. Everybody's invited. Oh, great. Homo universalis. Okay, here is why I think it really has the credentials of a new species. Let's first of all look at our spirituality, our consciousness. How many of you feel your spirituality and your consciousness is arising toward greater, greater expansion? There we are. Okay, that's right there. The next one is creativity, vocation, social initiatives. How many of you feel some more creativity to express yourself arising? Look at this audience, and really, this is phenomenal. See, we have to say how very precious this is. And now let's add to it the, the part that we often do not consider the high-tech genius of humanity. Let's add nanotechnology, biotechnology, quantum computing, including artificial intelligence, space travel. When you hold your cell phone in the palm of your hand, you have a global brain right there. When you're on internet, you're traveling like a hologram with the speed of light. What's actually happened to our species is we have been given powers of our ancient gods. Blow up world, build worlds. Change bodies, evolve bodies. Create more intelligence, create new entities, create new life forms, godlike power. Now, many of us shy away, but then what are we doing? We're just turning it over to the wrong ones. What if we should turn our attention toward that power and see that it is here for the very same direction of evolution itself? Greater consciousness, greater freedom, more complex order. We can heal the earth. We can free ourselves from deficiency needs. We can explore the cosmos beyond, and we can open up the vast resources of inner space. Our generation is right there at that cusp, because it's not going to go on for thousands of years in this holding position, you see? So not only are we lucky to be in this room, but we're lucky to be alive right, right, right now. Okay. So if this is true, and we are gaining the powers, and we are becoming a new species like Homo sapiens was new from Neanderthal and so on. So what do we do about that? <laughs> That's, nobody's been ever even knew we had to do something about it. But, <laughs> but you do. <laughs> That's the, that's the truth. That's why I'm here to announce the new species. The internet is our nervous system. It is our mass media. And it has been said by, by many people, including Jose Arguez, who was such a student of the Mayan culture, that when enough of us place our interest and intention of love, creativity, wholeness, and oneness in our mass media, our mass nervous system is going to turn on. And we're going to be like a newborn planetary system whose intelligence collectively can be revealed. And one of our goals as this new species is to place our intentions in our internet until we can begin to see the evolutionary components in health, education, economics, science and, science and technology, and realize we're already an emerging humanity. Yes, we're already here. We have one more degree of connectivity and communication for this to happen. So I'd like to take a moment here just to have those of you who will imagine you're right in this predicament where evolution or devolution, humanity arise. I'd like one or two people to stand and actually say humanity arise. Tell us the noosphere. We have this recorded. There's live stream going on here. What's arising in you? Would somebody like to share? Okay, you have to say your name 
and we need we're going to get a mic to you please we have some some mics uh around yes here comes a mic rounding the bend here comes dawn dawn thank you dawn okay we should have a mic on either side please as, as these were they come up okay blessings to you so much love is arising inside of what you're saying it's you're so articulating the voice of love the language of love and that new humanity was born through that vibration that you're sending inside the internet wow it's extraordinary thank you for it's a gift to be here and hear this conversation and share that with everyone it's so extraordinary and so i would say love this, yes what's arising in us is love thank you so so much and it's consciousness that comes with and the, the consciousness that comes that with that wisdom humanity yes. arising thank you another one who would like to share there's one there. Can you see Dawn, please? Uma, you should get up and help because sometimes they can't see it because they're. Okay, all right. Me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, from, my, my name is Dorian, and uh, I'm not quite your age, but getting close, <laughs> catching up. And just to express my delight in the newness, not youngness, but newness what you're expressing and what we have the opportunity in this moment to express. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uma, do we have only five more minutes for this whole thing? Or... Okay. All right. Rude has somebody up there. And say your name when you stand up, please. My name is Christina. Christina. And what is arising in me today is such gratitude, such depth and grace and truth. We are all so, so connected. And I am so honored to be here today at the cusp of this arising. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I believe this is the first time Homo Universalis has been announced. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Uh, what I'm real, uh, my name is Mel, and what I'm realizing more and more in my life is that everything is actually connected, and and uh, and what that means actually is that uh, uh, <coughs> that. Everything is communicating with everything else. Yes, yes, yes. That, that is exactly right. If you look at the way the spiral goes, consciousness, freedom, and more connected synergistic order for billions and billions of years. And just a note on that, one of the challenges we faced in most of our society were structured in separation. We're structured even in our democracy. It's win-lose. And what we need to be moving toward is not only win-win, but sharing needs and resources, a synergistic democracy. And many of the small groups that are here are already doing that. And when we start, like here at Sunrise Ranch, it's a synergistic democracy. I believe that as we connect that which is already synergizing, we'll find we're almost all here. That is to say, everyone who's rising is connecting. And I want to declare what my, my invitation is. I would like to invite you to help us initiate a movement for the new species. I would like to invite you to help us with humanity's team who's joining together to do this, to start in this fall a year-long on internet to call into connectivity and communication members of the new species in the noosphere and we have an invitation if you're interested on your way out for you to simply sign that you would like more information but let me tell you what i envision 
knowing that the noosphere is sensitive to what's emerging and that we are surrounded by people whose consciousness is already emerging the connectivity is not fully there but in many small instances there's a good deal of local connectivity and uh, even operational and regional connectivity so i'm imagining as many people as possible who are attracted to themselves becoming a member of this new species to their own creativity with people who are already emerging who are i would say some of the outstanding initiators of the new we would gather for the very first time an effort to experience together our membership in that species because what i find for myself if i feel separate for too long i lose it this person you see here can get depressed i can feel disoriented and i can suddenly say who do you think you are barbara what see if i get disconnected connectivity is absolutely essential for the stability and the emergence of who we are yes adam would you like to say something could you please speak i love to hear you talk thank you barbara i what i'm hearing from you it, about this new species, I have a sense that we've been here forever, <laughs> because I think we've had a bunch of pioneers, which have come before us. We've yes. had Lao Tzu, we've had Pythagoras, we've had Plato, we've had Buddha, we've had Jesus, and the the list goes on. Martin Luther King. You know these people. You feel them. You know they're in your heart. They're already there. So I know what's happening. We've been downloading this forever. <laughs> so yes. it's just a matter of what, how can we consciously engage it connectedly so that we can make something happen you're so right Adam because you know what they all said you can do it Buddha didn't say you should all be Buddhas he said if you meet another Buddha knock them down and Jesus said you're going to do the works that I did in greater works all of the great avatar but it wasn't quite time and then we've had some of these great philosophers like Teilhard de Chardin, Sri Aurobindo, and Buckminster Fuller, and Ken Wilber, and on and on. There's a great literature of people, but it wasn't quite time. And I think that what started it going was the climate change problem, is we realized we had a time frame here. It's one thing to say things have to change, but it's another thing to say maybe in 20 to 30 years you're going to uh, the waters are going to rise, you're going to lose everything, and we'll have mass migrations and we'll have a terrible defeat. And then people say, well, I don't know what to do. Well, that's really true, but some people do know what to do. In fact, many people do know what to do, and it's not even acceptable anymore. I don't know what to do <laughs> because. <laughs> have to get to do something so um, what you have to do is connect and co-create and and motivate each other on the internet and so I, I am so excited about that what I love about the bringing the new species into personal connection with each other in a resonant field on the internet is that it's so attractive we, it's attractive because it's the heart space, it's the creative space, it's the expanded consciousness space, and you want to be part of it. Yes? So today, yes? Yeah, there are a few more people who will say what they would like to create. Rude, do you have one there? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. But, uh, um, no, no, I'm, I'm wanting to hear you. Uh, for me, my name is Justin. Um, and for me, uh, a sense of responsibility and um, uh, really caring about where we are is really what's uh, arising in me and trying to bring that to the outside matrix when we come up into here. It's a whole different world. And then what's really important is to respect the responsibility and bring it out there and show people and help people understand that this is, you don't have to live the way that you're living. The society that is kind of created for us is not the only one. 
Yeah, that, like. That's exactly right. And I'd like to add the thought here of what I call the wheel of co-creation, that we're structured in separate disciplines. But if you put our turn on the spiral as the wheel of co-creation, and you put the people innovating in health, in education, in governance, in, in science and technology into a synergistic environment with each other even one more time, the world would see we're almost already here. There's a lot more here when it's connected. So what we're going to do on this one year uh, together is we're going to have a wheel of co-creation. And it's not only we'll have this person and that person, we're going to show how we're part of a living system. And I want help on how to do this. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Shanti, and I'm here to help. <laughs> yes. Instant manifestation. <laughs> so, in the here and now, I declare on behalf of the universal consciousness, the new earth has arrived, and the heaven is restored back in its true and original place, and that each of us play a co-creative role in the creation of the story oh. yet to be, all that is becoming. Oh. I am that we are. I am grateful to you. That is so, so beautiful. And I want to take a moment to, well, let's, let's see that, then to express my gratitude. Okay, go ahead, Rude. You introduce her, please. My name is Michelle. Hello. Hello. Um, I really appreciate what you've been saying about that the internet and a space for communication about consciousness is so prevalent because I can say for the last four years, probably since 2012, since my first transformational festival, I was really inspired to create conscious media. And I've been dabbling as the waves of ascension have come in and out of my own life, spreading that message about how we're all evolving, how our consciousness is evolving, and how love and truth and compassion is like really our saving grace for our own evolution and seeing each other as souls, really, in the, in the world, and how we have to be respectful and mindful and wisdom and consciousness and all those things. So it's a beautiful medicine for me to receive that you're like, keep doing that, because that's actually like a part of the solution, and it's something that's been in and out of my own life. So thank you so much for that. You're, you see, you're, we're already doing so much of it. And I would like all the people who have helped produce this to please stand for me to give thanks to every single one, a large team from Sunrise Ranch has been at work. This is this is a whole effort of the ranch to support this. And we give we give a great deal of thanks to everybody who has already done that. In fact, I think you should all come up and stand here with me, all of you, please, who have done this. Yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at this. Look at this team and of course your daughter and all of this and and uh, Bridget with us. And for Bridget. For Bridget. Woo! Bridget and I are going to go to Carnegie Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, in a moment as you leave, you, there's an opportunity, as Barbara said, to give us your email address and we'll send you more information about the year-long program. Also, we'll send you an ebook that Barbara wrote, uh, Evolutionary Synth Synthesis. And before we do that, we have uh, one last song. Roshana Ariel is going to join on the flute with Bridget on the violin. Thank you all so much. Thank you. 